Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are back in the VAB for a little bit today as it uh, occurs to me that I should probably test out this Skylab module uh, here in low Earth orbit before we go uh, sending one off to Mars since that craft is already being built and I have no idea what to do with it or how it works. So uh, I figured I'd just make a small station addition to our current uh, in-orbit station that has a uh, two-person crew on it currently. But uh, doesn't mean we can't expand that a little bit, maybe get some quality research out of them, and maybe actually satisfy that uh, build a space station contract that uh, bit me so hard uh, the last time we attempted it. So uh, I've started out with a, a Gina core. We're probably going to need at least two to satisfy the tonnage requirements of this thing. Although I think there's a avionics included on the Skylab module because it's just telling me avionics okay. And even though I checked down on the bottom, and we're certainly way over tonnage for uh, what even two Agena cores would provide, uh, it still says it's okay. Um, I don't know if it's a bug or if I just don't trust it, so I'm probably going to still include two cores. So I'm um, just trying to figure out tank placement and everything that I want to do with this uh, as far as getting it set up, I'm I'm pretty terrible at, at building space stations or space station modules in, in general. Uh, I should really plot these things out as a whole entity here in the VAB and then put them up part by part instead of just building a part and then bolting it on and then building a part and then bolting it on. But uh, I don't know. Maybe for future stations that's an approach I will take. But uh, this satisfies my need for more docking ports in a better arrangement. I have another arrangement for future shuttle dockings, but we will get to that later. But uh, first things first, we're going to need some thrusters. We're probably also going to need some fuel in here. There's a whole lot of capacity for uh, additional fuel inside this Skylab module. Um, I did not know that at this point in the build, but I, I will figure it out later. And Man, it's something like 7,000 liters. And we have this cool cupola. Cupola? that uh, I would really like to include. It's just, man, that really screws up everything that I had uh, kind of figured out for this. I'd like to slap it somewhere where it has a good view, but I guess that looks even weirder than just uh, without that part at all. So I think that's what I'm going to go with for now. See? Bad at building stations. But, uh, you know, if you're going to be in orbit for an extended period of time, you should at least have a good view. And I don't feel like either the HAB module or the bay really provides that. So we're going to move our massive docking assembly to the top of the station, which of course will be most closely docked with the um, mobile science processing lab. And we'll just uh, try to get some things figured out as far as making sure we have clearance. Uh, I guess the clearance requirements for these is to be able to dock an Artemis to it. Uh, there's no way we're getting a shuttle on that docking port. That's just uh, the reality of it. But like I said before, I have a solution for the shuttle docking that I will get to later on in this episode. So for now, we're just going to uh, reassign some of these for life support and for fuel. And of course, wow, yeah, like 7,000 liters of fuel. That ups our tonnage by quite a bit. We're pushing pretty close to 100 tons with this. I think it was like 85 tons total. Uh, fully topped off and ready to go kind of mass. Um, which is pretty big. Uh, nothing we don't have the launchers to handle. But, I mean, I was really hoping to get this up on a DN-1. Yeah, this science part doesn't look quite good enough here. But I think we can put it on top just so long as we only get the one. Yeah, and that uh, gives us a little more clearance on those docking ports. That's not bad. All right, so we'll just uh, pick out some textures completely arbitrarily, even though they're the part that makes the station look like a station, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. Got good thruster balance for the most part. Um, we should be able to dock this. So we'll just, uh, for right now, we're just going to call it the Skylab module. Um, yeah. <laughs> It'll become part of the greater station, which uh, I guess we'll get to doing the naming thing on that the next time we fly up to it. No worries. It's coming. And we'll just, uh, we'll see what a DN1A will do for the lift capacity of this. There it is. And yeah, wow, that just looks goofy, doesn't it? That's just weird. So we're going to have to make some changes to this. But before I forget, I'm going to include some of these K, uh, KIS or... Maybe it's K-A-S. 
stuff, some struts and some um, pumping ports. The struts will be to attach it to the station proper and make a good secure fit so that all that tonnage can be managed, uh, not just through that docking port, but it'll have some stuff there. Anyway, I'm going to fuel up. This is the very first, or the second variant of the DN1A. It's got the twin HG3s and the three E1 boosters. We're going to make some changes to that, but uh, I will address more of that later because these changes became quite significant during flight testing in that the DN1 is just uh, not capable enough of a lifter just yet. Uh, even with a single RS-25, we were not hitting the Delta V numbers I wanted, so uh, it, it did require uh, updates to a DN2, uh, resulting in a DN2AX, but uh, again, I, I will get to that uh, later, probably on launch, so I have something to talk about for that, but uh, we're going to switch over to a different VAB here shortly, and I'm going to talk about the sh changes to the Shuriken. Ta-da! There it is. So this is our next planned cargo for our next crewed flight up for the Shuriken. Um, so I'll drop the camera back down here. Yeah, as you can see, it is a new docking arm specifically intended for the shuttle. Uh, lots of robotic parts and hinges. I have also made some changes here to the docking port uh, in its alignment and some of the surrounding areas. That's uh, more traditional, I guess you would say. It's more akin to what uh, the actual shuttle space shuttle's docking port alignment looked like. Um, now because of the reorientation of that, it did free up some more room in this cargo bay for uh, larger life support tanks so they have more endurance on station, um, a little bit more fuel for uh, the AJ-10 and the RCS system. Those solar panels have been upgraded. They are a little bit bigger and should produce uh, more yield. That was all just uh, tweak scaling. Uh, I have also included two uh, fuel cell generators, just in case I totally uh, underestimated the yield of anything there. So uh, I do have more KIS, KIS struts here for the docking port, so we can bolt it securely to the station. Uh, once it is in place, it will unfurl itself once it is clear of the bay. It has, obviously, an Agena core, so it can pilot itself to its own docking, and then we'll have an EVA to secure it, and then the arm can be articulated into multiple positions for uh, shuttle dockings. So this arm is going to be specifically for the shuttle thing. Um, yeah, what else was I talking about? Yeah, so I've made some changes to other things back up here, the docking port, the life support tank, um, the fuel tank, Batteries are pretty much the same, but I think now their endurance typically is up to about a month, 30 some odd days. I, I don't know why the discrepancy in the numbers there. I guess there's only two or maybe one crew assigned currently, and they're not at full complement. Uh, it's still maximum crew capacity is three, which will help us satisfy those uh, low Earth orbit contracts. Oh yeah, there's this uh, liquid hydrogen tank down here for the fuel cells. It is locked so that it doesn't get uh, put out the back by those HG3s, obviously. And uh, now on to other changes. Down here, mostly. You see that we've gone to the uh, RD-170. These are actually the RD-171. Uh, they're not the M version. I think the only difference there is tonnage, but I wasn't a whole hundred percent sure on that. So I, I, I did not purchase that additional upgrade just yet. And I think our thrust to weight ratio is uh, more than manageable. This thing's already pretty quick off the pad, so a reduction in tonnage even on our boosters at this juncture is fairly unnecessary. Um, so while I might still refer to them as the uh, 170, they are in fact the 171. Fair enough. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just a another quick double check. I'm pretty sure it's just the tonnage that's different, but uh, I I could be wrong. So if you happen to know, maybe let me know. Cause it might be a, a day or two before I can get back around to actually checking my own self and. Uh, now, yeah, we have to hit the thing to make the box go go away. There you go. Good time to do garbage collection, KSB. And I think uh, that is pretty much our list of changes for this. Um, added separatrons onto the boosters, give them a cleaner separation. Maybe they won't be running into each other 
uh, quite so much on separation here, but um, we're going to get a crew. Uh, for this one settled in, we're probably going to need to go hire some more scientists to uh, make sure that we can keep a full complement on our orbital station, as well as uh, a couple of newbies to send out to our Mars station. Once we have a research lab there, we can start generating a, uh, a lot of a lot of good science and a lot of good payout. And yeah, as you can see, the doors close cleanly around that uh, docking port. No issues there. Uh, we'll save this and uh, go ahead and get it added to the build list. This will probably be our next launch. The turnaround time on these is typically about 35 days. 36 days if you recover the entire orbiter, which of course last time we did not. And uh, building a new one from scratch is, uh, yeah, was that, like 169 something days. So, <laughs> the, uh, the profitability of using a shuttle here in KSB versus real life is, uh, is very real. You can save a lot of money by reusing the orbiter on this, and the turnaround time is way lower because you can just repurpose all that stuff that you had sitting around from your last recovery which does make it very very uh, worthwhile both uh, financially and time wise anyway let's jump over to the astronaut complex we're gonna hire a, uh, a couple of new astronauts here for our program probably just the uh, the first two scientists yep there we go yeah oh. Deanna, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Oh boy, that'll be fun. All right, we should, uh, yeah, that's a good name, isn't it? We should probably just uh, grab another pilot, too, while we're at it. Uh, this will probably be our crew for our next shuttle launch. We want to get them ranked up a little bit to at least level one. If they turn out to be uh, worthy of a Mars mission, I would like them to have at least one star under their belt before we uh, box them up and, and ship them out. So, uh, I'm willing to bet they'll probably take the next shuttle flight up. Uh, so it should go shuttle flight, then Skylab module. Uh, there might be some uh, retargeting of some of our interplanetary missions, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. So that's going to do it for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.